little bit light on film reviews for one basic reason. This is the week of Thanksgiving. So just like everybody else, I've got plans for the holiday season. And for those of you that are watching after the fact, I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving. But I'm personally thinking I'll just have two reviews this week. I'll review one movie from the Blackwell Ghost and my pick for the cinematic shuffle, which I do week after week, and I didn't want to get away from that. So we'll start with the Blackwell Ghost 4. Turner Clay is back at it once again with the Blackwell Ghost. Four. This time he's digging a little bit deeper into the Blightfoot serial murder case. He has been given an extremely enigmatic, mysterious riddle in the form of a cipher that he can't solve on his own, and he believes that the only way to do it is to go back to that house in Florida, that vacation house, and see if the spirits might be able to light the way. If you saw my review for the Blackwell Ghost 3, you would have saw that I wasn't the biggest fan of it for one main reason. It, it went away from the idea that the Blackwell Ghost has to be done at the Blackwell house. Truth be told, I am technically still a little bit sore over that idea that it's still called the Blackwell Ghost, even though we're not talking about that house anymore. I've now seen four movies at this point, and only two of them dealt with the Blackwell Ghost. The third and the fourth dealt with the Lightfoot Ghost. So. I mean, you can understand me being a little bit salty over that, you know, but truth be told, despite the problems that I had with the third film, I do think that Turner Clay is starting to really understand his niche a little bit here because not only is he focusing on horror as he has been in the past, but he's digging more into mysteries and not just mysteries in general, but mysteries that contain riddles, mazes, ciphers, and I don't know why, but that just seems so cool to me. I've always been a fan of, of riddles and mysteries, enigmas, and things that the main characters have to solve in order to get to the next step. And even though that this is paranormal and even though it is found footage, the added concept of riddles and mysteries seems to just liven up the series. Because even though the last film, Blackwell Ghost 3, also dealt with the Lightfoot Ghost, it was still just paranormal found footage stuff, and it wasn't a mystery that I cared that much about. When they introduced the cipher in this film, and the ghosts spelling out seemingly random letters over and over and over again, this is actually pretty interesting, and I was actually all into the mystery. Suddenly found myself not caring so much that it didn't deal with Blackwell Ghost anymore. Not only that, but Turner Clay is also getting more into the cinematography of the films. This movie actually looks really, really nice. The third film had a little bit of that as well with uh, exterior shots of uh, the Florida house, of the surrounding waters and swamps. And while the Blackwell Ghost 4 also had basically those same shots, it also had some really good panning shots, uh, dramatic close-ups of his face, all of which he legitimately seemed like an actual documentarian here with how he shot the movie. And of course there was another interview in this film which, again, felt just as real as the last one. He's doing a pretty good job of making his mockumentaries seem like actual, legit documentaries. Performances are getting stronger. I would actually say that the technical effects are getting stronger as well as in terms of what he actually encounters during his three-day visits, which seems to be a staple in all these films. He goes to these places for three days. What he sees, what he hears, and what he does seems to all be getting better, which is what you want to see out of a sequel. I do have a fear though. I do. The second film in the Blackwell Ghost series dug deeper into the mythos of that story, of that house, of what was going on there. This did the same thing for the third film. So my fear is that the fifth film will go to a, another house that's haunted with another mystery and we'll lose that momentum again. I love the momentum that we've gotten so far in this Lightfoot cold case murder mystery, whatever you want to call it. It's really good, and not only that, but the end of this film suggested that there's a lot more to go. There's a lot more mysteries to unfold, there's a lot more things to discover, all while dealing with, you know, basic paranormal found footage stuff. Again, I think that that found footage ghost stuff works really, really well, hand in hand, with that mystery. I love that Turner Clay created a machine in this film where it's basically a computer hooked up to a, a Mr. Spell toy so that if the ghost wants to speak, it can speak through Mr. Spell by saying letter after letter after letter. That's just a Ouija board. I, I love that he doesn't even talk about uh, a Ouija board whatsoever. He doesn't even attempt to use tools that other paranormal researchers use 
uh, in haunted houses, he comes up with his own crap. So in the last film, he took Scrabble letters and threw them onto a table. In this, he created a machine with a computer hooked up to a Mr. Spell. I love the originality there. Turner Clay is still a silly guy, and you don't always take him seriously. Because once again, just like the last movie, he stands in front of that hallway and he's like, Oh man, that hallway scares the poop out of me. He's not very convincing when it comes down to being afraid, unless he's frozen. Some people can convince the audience that they're afraid by screaming, by having these looks on their faces, by doing whatever. The most convincing Turner Clay is when he's afraid is when he doesn't say a word, that he's frozen to the spot and he's just, he doesn't know what to do, he's just staring off in the distance. He looks at the camera and he looks away again. That's the most convincing that he's been in the series, and he does that a couple times in this movie. Also, the really slow, handheld camera stuff where he's just walking down the hallway towards the open door at the end, that's also effectively tense because the house in general isn't your typical, natural, standard, scary, haunted house. It's just like a normal vacation house. It's really hard to take a vacation house like this and make it seem legitimately scary because there's windows everywhere. It's a bright house unless it's in the middle of the night. But once he takes that camera and he slowly walks towards an open doorway when he's hearing sounds off in the distance, those moments work for me. I said that the third film wasn't scary at all and I was kind of annoyed at it and I didn't know if I wanted to keep watching the movies because it went away from the Blackwell ghost. It stopped being effectively spooky. It talked about a pretty standard annoying story I didn't care about. But the fourth film went back, at least to the elements that actually made uh, the first and second film tense and a little bit spooky. Again, not the scariest found footage thing I've ever seen in my life. Also not the best made technically. I fully understand why it's gone under a lot of people's radars. And I also understand why it continues to go under people's radars. But I do think that if you're a fan of found footage, then in general, this series is worth the watch. So let's take a look at what I scored The Black Belt Ghost for, which was a B plus letter grade, final overall score of 81%, 81 out of 100 possible stars. You can see that my bias score and unbiased score down below are kind of split. It's much higher scored in the bias segment, of course, because it is horror. Also, I really enjoyed the mystery angle of it. But I could also see a lot of people just not caring overall at the same time. Also, even for those of you that are Blackwell Ghost fans, this is gonna be a little bit blaspheming here, but this is technically my highest scored film in the series. And I think that mostly has to do with the mystery, riddle, enigmatic, cipher part of the series. Where it's like the paranormal activity version of National Treasure, like the two colliding. I don't know why, but this just seemed amazing to me. There's originality there, there's promise for the future, there's everything that I want to see in a movie like this that makes it stand out as its own dang thing. Which, by the way, the first film in the series had problems with. It didn't feel fully like its own thing other than the well that was in that basement. That's the one thing that made it stand out. Personally, I think that this movie is the only one in the series that is just filled to the brim with things that make it stand out. So now I'm really interested and invested again into what happens in the series from this point forward. But what about you guys? What do you think about the Blackwell Ghost 4? Where would you rank it in the series if you've seen the entire series? I'm really curious. As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out.